Hey everyone, Dr. Hanisha here, and today I'm really excited because I'm actually doing a food sensitivity test, and I'm gonna be testing for 208 different foods to see uh, what I might be sensitive to. Uh, there are other options of doing 96 foods or 144, but I figured I might as well go all the way, and so I am testing for all of them. I figured this is also a really good time while we're in quarantine. I'm cooking more, I'm getting more creative with my foods, so I might as well find out what I might still be reacting to and so um so that's why I'm going to do the test now uh, but also I found it to be really helpful in helping patients with all sorts of issues anywhere from digestive issues to menstrual irregularities to migraines and headaches um, kind of all sinus issues, right? So kind of all these things. And what's nice about this food sensitivity test is that it's testing so much more than the most common allergens, right? A lot of people tend to be reactive to gluten or dairy or soy or sugar, but there might be other things. Maybe there's tomatoes or almonds or walnuts that you might actually be thinking is good for you or healthy, um, but you're you're actually ne negatively reacting to it. So um, So that's why I found it to be really helpful. Uh, but today I figured I might as well while I'm doing this, I might as well walk you all through it. So first thing is you're going to separate the blood collection card from, from all of this. And it's actually really simple. I mean, I think it might look like there's a lot of paperwork here, but it's really just so that I can show you. Um, but then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, next step is I'm gonna take a, a sterile alcohol pad. <laughs> I'm going to then, oh, I'm gonna get that ready, but I'm gonna open this up. This is the um, lancet uh, that I'm going to actually use to inject my fingertip. It's, it doesn't sound as, uh, or it's not as bad as it sounds. So now I'm gonna use this alcohol pad, kind of squeeze a little bit out of my fingertips, trying to get the blood flow going to the tip of my fingertips clean off my fingertips and then I on the side of my fingertips I'm going to and there we go and I'm going to take oh I forgot to separate make sure you take this out before so you want to take the gauze out before so the first blood I'm actually going to remove and then now I'm going to squeeze out some blood onto each of these little spots and I want to cover it as much as possible. Okay, and I'm gonna put you all on pause and then come back after I'm done. Okay, so it was kind of like filling out a Scantron with your blood, which is really interesting. The main thing is you want to be sure that it comes through on the back side as well. And then um, I technically was only only needed to do seven blood spots, but I decided to do a few extra just in case because they did recommend that. But then you let it air dry for at least three hours and then you ship it off and that's it. All right, I kind of wanted to show which foods also are included in these food sensitivity tests. So this one is the 208 panel. So you're gonna get all the different types of cheeses, dairy products, all the nuts and seeds, um, also a number of different vegetables as well as fruits, it looks like, and seafood, and then meat, poultry, grains, legumes, and then the miscellaneous includes uh, some herbs and spices, as well as sugar, cacao bean, and then, oh, there's more herbs and spices there, and then, of course, candida. Okay, so for me personally, the main reason why I wanted to do this is because I do have a history of hormonal imbalances, and uh, even though all of my symptoms have really subsided um, in terms of my hormones as well as my digestive issues, I still do have some hormonal imbalances that appear in my blood work. And so um, so that's why I'm trying to figure out how else I can optimize that. And that's what I'm working on. And this is just another note. I've been working on my hormones for over four years now, maybe five. And I'm still working on them uh, because it takes a really long time. So this is another indication of why it's really important to get your hormones tested and figured out because it may take much longer than you expect it to.